Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you a pretty cool GRC tool that I recently started using. And one of the best parts about this tool is that there's an option where you can use it completely free of charge. All right. And for those of you who are familiar with GRC tools, knows that these things can be pretty expensive. You know, they could cost anywhere within the tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, that's pretty great how you could use this tool for free if you wanted to, right? And the name of the tool is CISO Assistant. And this is made by a company named Intuitive, right? I hope I pronounced that properly. Yeah, but they uh, made the tool CISO Assistant. So this tool, as I said, is kind of your one-stop shop for GRC, governance, risk, and compliance. Right, so if you're anyone who does that in your organization or is interested in potentially doing that one day, this might be a good tool for you to check out. So this is their website. This is intuitive.com. And if we scroll way down and head over to pricing, here you'd see the different options for using this tool. So these are the various options for using CISO Assistant. As we could see, we have the community version, which is zero dollars, right? Zero euros forever. And this is the version I'm going to be showing you in this video. Uh, one of the things about this version is that you are actually hosting it yourself. So you need to have access to a virtual machine that could be local or something in the cloud for hosting, you know, the, the um, Cisco Assistant tool. Uh, one of the advantage of going with one of the other uh, setups here like the process is that they host it for you on their servers so they maintain the VMs, they update it accordingly as well as you have access to priority support etc. Also some other versions there the pro on-premises and custom. But the community version to be honest has all that you really need you know in my opinion I've been using it uh, maybe like close to a year now and this works fine for what I need to do. I use it specifically for doing risk assessments in our organization, right? And this has been a really uh, good tool, you know. Prior to this, we were using like, you know, as a lot of you are probably using like spreadsheets and some of the manual ways of tracking GRC and doing risk assessment. But having something like this is really, uh, really cool in my opinion. It kind of just consolidates everything and present it in a much better platform, dashboard, single plane of glass, etc. Right, so yeah, we'll be using the community version in this video. So uh, to do that, we need to head over to GitHub because they actually have a GitHub repository which shows you how to set up this, right? And um, we'll be using the instructions in the GitHub uh, repository as well as some additional instructions that I kind of found out just experimenting for my own because some of the things uh, in their GitHub repository is not that clear. So I kind of fill in the blanks in this video and how you'd go about doing that. So there are two requirements in order to host and use this assistant. One being you need to have access to a virtual machine since you need to create a Docker container to host the actual tool itself. So you could, you know, this could be a local VM on your machine, on your computer, or you could use a remote VM, like on a cloud platform, such as AWS. In this video, I'm going to be using DigitalOcean since it's a bit cheaper and they do just as good as, uh, uh, of a job as AWS does, right? So you could use uh, one of those things, right? But you, yeah, you need a virtual machine. And the second thing is you need access to a domain name. Since you'll be accessing this assistant, using a domain name you cannot access it using an ip address you specifically need to access it using a domain name so those are the two requirements that you need in order to be able to use CISO assistant so to get started i'm logged into my digital ocean account so as i mentioned digital ocean allows you to create virtual infrastructure uh, in the cloud so i'll be using that to create my docker container for this demo if you want to follow along and use DigitalOcean as well, I'm going to leave a link in the video description that you could use to sign up and you get 200 US worth of free credit. You know, so that's perfect for following along with this video, right? No obligations. You could just cancel it after using those uh, $200 worth of credit. But yeah, so I'm logged into my DigitalOcean account. I'm going to hit on Create, Droplet. 
I'm going to leave the region as New York. You know, however, you could change it to whichever one makes sense for you. Uh, I'm going to select Ubuntu and I'm going to use Marketplace, right? So what we're going to do is search for Docker since it's a Docker container we'd be using, right? So as we can see, Docker is there. I'm going to select the latest version. And for the size, I'm just going to select basic. I'm going to choose regular and the lowest tier of machine, which is just $6, you know, that's 6 US per month, which is pretty good in my opinion for a VM, right? I'm going to scroll down. Next, we need to create a password. So let me do that here really quickly, right? So create a root password and we just hit on create droplet, right? And this takes like a couple seconds to create the actual droplet itself. So I'm not going to do this because I created a droplet in advance for this video. The reason I did that is because I needed to link it to my domain name, the IP address, right? So here we have the droplet that I'll be using, right? And remember, as I said, you need to create, you need to link this to your domain name since you'll be using a domain name to access the SOA assistant. You cannot access it using an IP address, right? But let's confirm that this droplet is up and running. So I'm going to copy the IP address and I'm going to bring up my terminal emulator tool, which is Potty. This is free to use. You know, you could go ahead and use this if you like to, or feel free to use whichever one, you know, you want to. So I'm going to enter the IP address there. I'm going to hit open. They should ask, ask you to accept the keys. You know, if it's your first time logging into the machine, go ahead and do that. For the username, I'm going to use root and I'm going to paste the password there. And okay, so for some reason, I didn't get that password correct. Let me just... Double check that. And there we go. So I am in my virtual machine now, right? So I'm logged in as root in my Docker container. All right, cool. So what we need to do, as I mentioned, is we need to create a DNS record, right? That links our virtual machine, you know, to that. So once we've created our Docker container, what we need to do is link the IP address, you know, create a DNS entry for this in our domain, right? So to do that, you need to head over to whichever dashboard you use to manage your domain, whether that's GoDaddy, uh, Hostinger, etc. For this example, I'm using Hostinger, right? I, I have my domain hosted there. Uh, if, if you want to sign up for Hostinger, I also have an affiliate link in the video description where you could get some free credit by using that as well. But regardless of the fact, if you're using another domain provider, that's fine. All we need to do is create an e-record, right? So we go to manage DNS records, wherever that is in our uh, panel, right? Our dashboard. And we enter a domain, you know, a name that we want to use. So my one is CISO. I'm going to use that. And we need to paste the IP address here, right? That we have for our Docker container. So this basically creates that domain, you know, that subdomain, I should say, to this IP address. And we hit add record, right? I already did this in advance since it could take a little while to create that record. So I did this in advance, but this is definitely you want you something you want to do as well, you know, because it's a requirement, as I said, in order to access CISO Assistant. All right, cool. So once our Docker container is set up, our DNS entry is set up, we could actually test to see if we can log in to the CISO Assistant uh, machine using the domain name, right? This is just to kind of confirm that the DNS entry is active. So I'm going to enter my domain name here. All right. And anything you see in this video, guys, whether it's domain name or IP address, is going to be destroyed anytime I finish creating this video. So if you're trying to hack me, and I just want a new in advance. All right, so I entered the domain name there and I'm just going to hit open. If all went well, we should, you know, be logged into our Docker container. Yeah, and there we go. It's asking me to log in. So see, it's showing me my domain name. You know, so everything is mapped properly there, as we can see. So I'm going to enter my password now. Let me just 
Grab that here. All right, cool. Right, so our prerequisites have been met, which is we have created our Docker container. We have created we have created the DNS entry as well. Now time to actually install Cisco Assistant on the platform itself, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over back to the GitHub repository and I'm going to copy, you know, the installation command. Don't worry, I'm going to leave a link for the uh, GitHub uh, repository in the video description below for you to check out. So once I copy that, I'm going to come back over to my VM. I'm going to paste that and hit enter. All right, doesn't take that long. As you can see, just like two or three seconds it takes. Uh, next up, we need to actually uh, edit some things in the tool itself before we compile it and run it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit on LS, right? And here we could see the different files that were downloaded, right? The file that we need to edit in particular is Docker Compose Remote dust .yml, sorry. So this is the file that we need to edit. So I'm going to type in nano and the name of the file. So let me show you where this tutorial is located, right? So this is the actual tutorial on their GitHub repository for setting it up on a remote server, right? So this is kind of what we're doing. This is the workstation I'm using and we have it set up right now remotely on DigitalOcean. And this is what we need to edit in that remote uh, that Docker Compose remote uh, YML file that I showed you uh, earlier. So notice their tutorial spoke about editing Docker dash Compose YML, but I in my testing this did not work. What worked was the Docker dash Compose dash remote, right? As the one that actually worked for me. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. All right, so we enter nano, and I'm going to enter the file name which is docker-compose-remote. And once we type in that, uh, it kind of autocomplete. It's YML. Enter. And these are the settings, and this is the configuration in this file, right? So uh, what we're doing, we're kind of following along with the tutorial here, right? We need to edit what we're seeing in the tutorial here. Right, it's currently these things are red. We need to edit it to reflect our, you know, URL that we're using to access the machine. So let me show you how we do that. Right, so this is the configuration of that Docker Compose Remote YML file. Right, so we need to edit some of these things here to uh, the DNS entry that we created. So the first thing I need to edit is where it says pool VM. VM right here. I'm going to go to that line and I'm going to edit that to the domain name that I created. Right? And that is Ciso dot Joshua's tech dot com. Right? That's our domain. And we also need to edit that here as well by the Ciso Assistant URL. Just gonna backspace that. Same thing here. So, this so come. Our right. another thing we need to edit is the back end public back end API. So again, we delete. So mostly it's like wherever you see the cool dash VM. Right, we need to change that with our domain name, right? Since we're going to be using this to access the CISO Assistant tool. Uh, is there anything I'm missing? Oh, yeah. One more thing, and that's down here at the CADI, at the environment. So, again, backspace here. So... All right, and I think we're good there. Yeah, I think we're good. 
make sure as well that the TSL internal at the bot is this is set to TL TLS internal. Right? Make sure that's set here as well. And essentially we're just following, you know, the tutorial here in terms of what they're showing us to edit. All right, so once we're good there, we, we've confirmed that we've entered, you know, maybe the necessary changes. We need to save this. To do that, we're going to press Control O, Enter, Confirm, and Control X, the exit. Right, cool. So that has been saved. If we do a LS, so what now what we need to do is actually run the file, right? So that's the Docker Compose dash remote. Dot sh. That's the file we need to run. We need, and we run that by dot forward slash and the file name. Enter. And this itself actually takes like a minute to run. It doesn't take that long. It actually is. Currently just download it and compile it and run in the file for us. Right, as we can see the database, you know, we just need to give it some time for the database to be ready. And shortly it should ask us to enter our email address. So this would be the email address of the super user, you know, that first user. This is the email address that we'd be entering here. You can see it's in initiating our super user account. All right, so I'm going to enter my email address now. It's now asking me to enter my password. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the password now. All right, great. So it says the super user was successfully created and it's telling us we could connect to Cisco Assistant on this URL. This, I, I'm not sure why it shows this URL still. We are not using this URL. We are using the sysl.joshuastechtips.com uh, uh, colon 8443, you know, so can I ignore this part, right? Right, so this is the URL, and remember to enter the 8443 at the end, right? Colon 8443. So let's go. And we could see we get getting a warning. So don't worry, don't panic. This is normal because we're using a self signed certificate. It's given us this error. But what we could do, we can hit advance. Right? See, we it's getting this because we're using a self signed certificate. We could fix this error if we just issue a valid certificate. It, right? But for this video, we don't need to do that. I'm just going to accept the risk and continue. And there we go. Here we can see our Cisco assistant was successfully set up and it's prompting us to log into our account. So we need to enter that super user account that we just created earlier. So I'm going to do that now. And as we could see, we have successfully logged into our Cisco assistant account. Uh, here's the dashboard and we could see here yeah, the various features on the side, you know, in terms of governance, risk compliance, etc. But remember, I'm going to do a part two in this video where I show you how we could do a risk assessment, right? Using Cisco Assistant. And that's something you're not going to want to miss. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel for when that video drops. And remember, guys, if you like these sorts of things, anything cybersecurity related, you know, why not consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already? I try my best to drop a new video every week, you know, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. As always, thanks a lot for viewing and see you on the next one.